makasaysayang araw po, historic afternoon to everyone. The title of my presentation would be Salya, Bayanihan and Order in the Traslacion of the Nuestro Padre Jesus Nazareno. I would like to thank the organizers of this Pagdiriwang, an online international conference on folklore and heritage, the UP College of Social Sciences and Philosophy Folklore Studies Program, especially Dean Dr. Bernadette Abrera, my former teacher, my dissertation advisor for this topic, my mentor, Professor Dr. Carlos P. Tatel Jr., and Ms. Neem Sapalo, for allowing me to be part of this discourse and all the assistance they gave. Today is the 500th anniversary of the docking of the Magellan Elcano expedition to Philippine shores. This event will usher the introduction of Christianity in the Philippines by the Europeans. Yet, a lot of people are not so keen in celebrating its quincentennial because people felt it will be a celebration of the evils of colonialism. Call out what is wrong, sure, but extreme woke and cancel culture is just another form of Talibanism. And I dare say this, it will be detrimental to culture and heritage in the long run. History and the social sciences contextualize. That is why our work is important in enriching explanations rather, rather than simplifying them. Our ancestors are not stupid. Our culture is not weak, but flexible. We accepted Christianity not because we are uto uto, but because we saw patterns of our former faith in the new faith such as the belief in the kaluluwa or the soul, and that it should show goodness and kapatiran or brotherhood. The power of healing that emanates from items and dead bodies, and the sacred rituals and performances we offer as thanksgiving. We made Christianity our own. And aside from the devotion to the Santo Nino, the most popular ritual that encapsulates this appropriation or pag-angkin of the Christian faith is the devotion to the Nuestro Padre, Jesus Nazareno de Quiapo. And the translation procession held every 9th January in Manila. Contrary to popular legends that the Nazarene is black because it survived the fire, a kind of dark wood was used to carve it. Its color made it even more attractive because... In this representation, the Lord looks like us who suffered the humiliation of crucifixion as we also suffered the yoke of colonialism. This is God who made pakikipagkapwa tao with us and therefore understands us. But each, what each of us know that, th that his death is not the end of the story. Just as the Lord was resurrected after three days, we too will find an end to suffering towards healing and redemption. According to some historians, this narrative actually inspired people to fight for freedom and redeem their country, aside from just being an opium of the people. Translacion is the Spanish word for transfer. The possession of the Señor from Luneta's Quirino Grandstand or Independence Grandstand back to Quiapo commemorates how the original Mexican image of the suffering Lord carrying his cross, which was once housed at what used to be the Church of St. John the Baptist at the Luneta, was transferred after some time to the Recoletos Church in Intramuros, the supposed original burned during the Second World War. A replica of this original was made and was handed over to the present church in Quiapo, now the Basilica. And during the time of Archbishop Basilio de Santa Justa y Rufina, in 1767 or 1787, depending on what uh, article you're reading, it must be clarified that although the procession of the Black Nazarene around Quiapo is already 200 year or so tradition, the translation itself is a recent invention, which idea only started in 2007 to commemorate the 400 years of the coming of the recollect priests who introduced the image later on, and then was finally called Traslacion in 2009, after which it had become an annual event. But those who lack understanding somehow throws negative light to the action of the devotees. For example, 
order and bayanihan or helping each other united together are words that people will not easily associate with Gapo or the Black Nazarene. Television footage seemed to show hundreds of thousands of fanatical devotees at one time scrambling to get near the andas of the Senor. They wanted to have their hankies be touched to the image to acquire power and healing as our ancestor did. ancestors did to Devanitos. Some people notice how selfish some devotees are as they stepped on others just to get near the image. Devotees are quickly judged as illogical, chaotic, and crazy. But Monsignor Jose Clemente Ignacio, the former rector of Quiapo Church who developed the translation as we know it today, said that to understand the devotion, one must be a devotee. Victor Turner described in his articulation of the ritual process, the devotees at a certain stage of devotion enter liminality, a phenomenon that takes us away from all our daily lives where the notion of time, class, and divisions are suspended. In this, we reenact the crises and struggles that brought us together in the faith. In the Black Nazarene Translation, everyone around the Andas seems to be in a trance in a semblance of unity and equality where everyone is barefoot. Communitas is achieved. As a visual people with a penchant for drama and soap opera, the possession of the Black Nazarene became a way for Filipinos to visually dramatize their faith. A crowd management expert dubbed the procession a simulated choreographed craze, seeming chaos that is created by the calculated and collective action of the people. Certain hand signs are used by the ihos to direct the devotees in pushing the andas forward. There is a coda that the devotees understand. The word salya is shouted and devotees run together and use the force of their bodies to slam the andas. to move forward or to put it into order. Also, the people around the andas, called pinga, which used to be the term for the handle of the andas at the sides, allowed themselves to be stepped upon as a form of penitence as they help others climb as well. This is also manifested every translation in Quezon Boulevard area when devotees let other people step on them so they could cross the other side of the road for free as a way of pamamanata or devotion. And despite hundreds of thousands of namamasans wanting to climb the andas, there are in average less than 500 injuries annually and for many years zero procession related deaths. Ano pa yan? Uh, uh, high blood lang. Uh, blood pressure. Because there actually exists a system. A certain way of going to the throng or going under the rope to avoid being wounded and to avoid wounding others. putting your two hands in front of your chest area. A certain way to go with the flow of the crowd, which are like waves in the river, reminiscent of the fluvial processions in this maritime culture. A way of calling for help by raising one's hand if one helps, one wants to be removed from the throng. They will be swiftly raised up by their fellow devotees to safety. A way for a hanky that is thrown to a member of the ihos. It would return to the person who owns it after being wiped to the image. Kasi dami ng tao na yun. And when it became the trans translation, now when it became the translation, the procession was elevated from a local event to an international pilgrimage. Hype up by constant and intensified media coverage. But there was already a system of coordination developed through the past 12 years. between the parish authorities on the ALPA level, the local government unit or the Bravo level, and up to even the regional and national level or the Charlie level in planning the procession and responding to any eventualities. At the Quiapo Church Command Center, assisted by the Center. Next slide, please. There, that's the Quiapo Church Command Center. I had observed in my ongoing seven-year study how re relatively smooth these relationships are despite the different interests of each one. 
For example, it was interesting for me to see church leaders who are critical of the excesses of the drug war work hand in hand in camaraderie with policemen to implement it, all for the sake of ensuring the safety of everybody. It is actually interesting to see the different sectors of society, the church, the government, the armed services, the NGOs, the business sector, the devotees, even the informal sector, including the Merons and the Uzis or the Uziseros, also known as the bystanders. The whole bayan actually working together to ensure the success of the event. One can see that this is the perfect manifestation of what Marcel Maus dubbed as the total social phenomenon or the total social fact. That event, the event that affects and makes the whole society work. But for me, this is Filipino bayanihan at work. The pandemic ushered in a new way of devotion by social distancing, caring for others or following the basic health protocols, successfully implemented by the Quiapo Church and focusing on the Holy Mass. According to authorities, there was no spike in COVID cases that would be attributed to the last fiesta. Its Facebook masses offered comfort to the devotees, even in foreign lands. That is why recently it was confirmed it has become top two social media influencer in the country, a true phenomenon. With this, we see that the concept of Salya and the whole procession itself encapsulate both our concepts of order and bayanihan. If we put it in a macro level, the whole translation itself is a phenomenon that is animated by the people, the church, and the government. Sinasalya ng buong bayan to its intended orderly and safe conclusion. So, how can we not celebrate as a nation ng buong bayan, our Christianity, when it had become part of who we are? Should we cancel ourselves? Thank you.